Well, uh, Warren, as we know, uh, after getting the script right, uh, the next uh, really crucial uh, part of filmmaking is casting. And um, if you miscast a movie, well, there's not much you can do after that point. You can have the greatest sets and costumes and production values and action, and you're just not going to have a movie. I mean, you've got to cast it right, and you have to give yourself the time. I, I, I take the time. Uh, we had uh, four months pre-production on uh, Copperhead, and uh, we started casting in uh, January of uh, 2012, and um, we were casting right up till, I'd say, 10 days before we were filming. Uh, it just takes time. We we, uh, <clears throat> we decided to cast the six leads uh, internationally from the entire pool of Anglophonic actors worldwide, and we did that casting out of Los Angeles. And the uh, balance of the cast of the other uh, 30 or so speaking parts, we cast uh, uh, near where we were filming. We cast it out of Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, and that process, as I say, took many months. Um, um, Thanks to Skype, uh, you can now do casting um, in foreign countries without having to get in an airplane and going there, uh, which saves a lot of time, a lot of wear and tear, and a lot of money. So uh, some of these uh, roles, for instance, on uh, Copperhead uh, were cast based on auditions that people did on Skype. Uh, with me at one end watching and talking to the actor and the actor at the other end in London or uh, in, in the case of uh, Angus McFadgen in Panama. Uh, but we did it the old-fashioned way too. Actually, we did. We met a lot of people in, El, in Los Angeles, and we we met a lot of people up. I went up to Nova Scotia. So it's a it's a it's a process. You have to give yourself time to meet people. Sometimes it's the first actor who comes in to audition for a role. You've got him. There he is. Need to look no further. But sometimes it takes many many weeks to find exactly the right person. And it, and it, of, co of course, it's critically important to get the leads cast right, but it's also important to cast the, the, the guy who has one line or maybe no line. It's a silent bit. Every single person that you see on the f film has to be perfectly cast. There, there's no compromise. And then I also worked with the Ree Brennan uh, in Nova Scotia who did our, uh, quote, unquote, the background casting or sometimes known as extras casting. Uh, and she selected, had open calls in, uh, up in New Brunswick, Canada, where we filmed, so that we saw, you know, she saw thousands of faces and she called it down and presented to me. So uh, I was involved with selecting, uh, with her enormous uh, help, the school children in the school scene, for instance, and the people in the general store, the people in the barn dance, because you want the camera to go freely when you're the filming on the day, and you don't want to f come across any face that doesn't belong. 1860s uh, upstate New York. <clears throat> so um, I enjoy it, thank goodness, because it is painstaking. It requires a lot of time. It's, it's very detail-oriented. And uh, in the case of the leading roles, um, Abner Beach, the, uh, the principal character, the one who's called the Copperhead, it's a very important piece of casting uh, because he embodies the position which has been 150 years later kind of discredited by history. So uh, every time he says something, uh, it doesn't ring uh, as, uh, uh, w w it doesn't, the sentiment doesn't, we don't necessarily agree with it 150 years later. So because his position is, is the one that's been discredited by history, you need somebody who can embody it and articulate it, who is believable and, compa and, and, and compassionate and, uh, so that you don't have a straw man that you're setting up to, fa to fail. And Billy Campbell delivered uh, that kind of humanity uh, as, uh, in addition to being a very polished uh, veteran actor who, who knows what he's doing. Uh, so that was, a, that was a very important piece of casting. Uh, then Angus McFadgen we cast as G, um, who is the antagonist. Uh, they, they, uh, you see in the film, uh, although they have different points of view on the solutions to their uh, current uh, problems that the United States is facing, um, for instance, both Abner Beach and uh, 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 G. Hagedorn uh, are opposed to slavery. Both Agner, Abner Beach and G. Hagedorn are, are for the Union. They have diametrically opposed views of how that should be uh, solved, how, how, that, how the challenges to that should be solved. One uh, fellow, uh, Abner Beach, believes that uh, violence and coercion is never the answer. And he can quote from the Bible. Uh, he can find the, 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 the scriptural support. Uh, turn your uh, 
uh, the swords and the plowshares, uh, uh, blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, and, the, and, and G. Hagedorn can also find uh, scriptural support for his point of view because he looks at, at the institution of slavery south of the Mason-Dixon line and he cannot tolerate it another day. He's out of patience and he thinks the only way to end it is through warfare. His, so he supports Lincoln's war. Um, he, 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 he thinks coercion is the answer. He thinks violence must be used. So you have these opposing views that become at loggerheads over issues which weren't easy in that day to, to resolve. And of course, uh, I'm not interested in a film about good guys and bad guys. Uh, that, that uh, to me is boring. Uh, you, 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 you've stacked the deck and you've uh, pre -or preordained the outcome. Uh, I mean, those films are entertaining, but they certainly don't interest me as, as a filmmaker. I'm interested in where life is, really lives and where right life really lives is, is an ambivalence in difficult decisions that we're all confronted with uh, where we're trying to sort things out and we're trying to make, uh, make the right decisions. Just like today we're confronted with all sorts of political decisions locally, statewide, and as a country. We're in debating about these things. And I don't think it gets us anywhere to dehumanize people with whom we disagree, to caricature them, uh, to say they're, uh, just because they have a different opinion, they're less of a human being than we are somehow. They're morally flawed. So, uh, but this is what happened in the generation of the 1850s and 1860s. They started to discredit the other person's humanity, uh, and that led eventually to uh, the cataclysm and the tragedy of the Civil War.